the imminent new era for England in which Brendan McCullum will coach both formats. Um, it, I also started off by asking you about, about Joss Butler and his future. Nothing to do with the fact that he hasn't played for four months because of a calf injury. Um, generally, his future as England's white ball captain, he's been given the full backing of Brendan McCullum and, and Rob Key. Uh, there was no... There was briefly a question of whether he, he should be replaced when Matthew Mott was replaced as the white ball captain, as a coach, but uh, the captain ultimately was given the full backing of the entire um, administration. Um, and as I said, he's 34, which is great. He's in his prime. Um, be 37 at the next World Cup. What, what do you think Brendan McCullum will be looking to, to get out of Joss Butler, apart from encouraging him to enjoy himself and, and not get too serious well, that, about that, That's what it will be. It'll be to have the fun back and the enjoyment back. But I, I'm going to give Josh Butler credit here, right? I think he's took a bit of stick. And I think what I will say about Josh is but he could easily walk away from international cricket, right? No worries whatsoever. He's another one. He he's, turn, he's turning down. You know what he gets paid in the SA20? He's walked away from the Rajasthan, well, the Pal Royals. Yeah. He's not playing in January because he wants to captain the team in India. I mean, exactly. Well, he's, he's not played for a while. And, and that's what I'm saying. Joss now has got a determination. I'm telling you, he could walk away from it and play in Rajasthan, uh, in Pal, and he could go on and play the IPL, although he's just not been retained, has he, by Rajasthan Royals? That probably might be a decision in it as well there. But he'll get any other. He's going to get picked up for a lot of money, right? It's going to be probably around that 18 mark. He's going to get picked up for a lot of money. A lot more than you will gain at Rajasthan, probably. And, but he's doing this because he doesn't want to go out as captain of England who had a shocking World Cup. He's got a determination that he wants to show that this team is good enough, he's a good enough captain, and he wants to do what Owen Morgan did. They're quite close, Owen, aren't they, and Johns? Mm. And I think he wants to do exactly the same for him. And I like that. He's got that steel, that grit. And he's willing to sacrifice to do it. And he's frustrated as anything that he's injured at this moment in time and he's not in the West Indies. I agree. I think I think it was the right decision to carry for Joss to carry on. Um, it could easily have gone um, new captain, new coach. And I don't think anybody would have I think I don't think anybody would have disagreed. I think they would have they would have said, Yes, he's our best player. But I think when you look at it and you if you break it down, the World Cups we had a side who deserved to play because they were World Cup winners and they were our best players. But I think they were going over the over the hill and I think there was a few of them hanging on by a thread when it comes to bodies. And I think the team let each other down rather than just any individuals. I think a collective team didn't perform as well in the two World Cups. So from Joss's point of view, it's a case of, well, if we're going to go again with a new coach and some young players... I just think I've done enough to lead it. And I think that was the, the biggest thing. Did Joss want to be captain of a young team to mould into what he believed was his team? Because I still think in that World Cup in India, it was still 80%, 75% of it was Owen Morgan's team because of the players and the ages that they were at and the World Cup winners. So I think this was Joss's chance to put his hand up and say to Rob Key, well, I deserve a chance to build my team like Owen Morgan did from 2015. And this is what you got in 2019. Now, this is will be my team. We'll have lost Bairstow. We've lost Roy. All these players that are gone, fallen by the wayside. We've got some exciting new talents, like Sir Bethel and all this coming through. And I'll get us to the next World Cup. I'll lead us to a, to a World Cup. And I'll give us our best chance of moulding these young lads to go and win it. And I think that was, that was important for Joss to say, right, any distractions out the way. Fair enough, he's injured and there's nothing you can do about that. But that SA20 decision was a big one. He's never going to walk away from the IPL and neither should he. But I think everything else, he's basically saying, my focus on England, I'm going to India with my team instead of going to the SA20 because by the time we come to the next World Cup, it'll be the team I moulded that identifies as, my, as, my, as me as a captain, with McCullum as a coach, and uh, I'll be judged when I get to the end of that tournament. And by then, what will he be, 35, 36, 37? And I think he deserves that because of the player he's been for English cricket. 37 in the next World Cup, that's right. He might have to keep up, give up the gloves. I think McCullum ah, might... I was going to ask you. Yeah, I think he I has would. to give up the gloves. I think I would give up the gloves. If I was 
McCullum, I'd be, I'd be pushing Joss to give up the gloves. He's getting a couple of injuries, like Ben, and just say, right, stand there mid on and mid off. Talk to your young players. Be in, be around the field. Um, enjoy your cricket by being in the field rather than being you know, part yeah, of the Tell you what else he should work. give up is a few press conferences. I thought Ben Stokes' <laughs> biggest challenge would be the media commitments for an England captain. And he has been remarkable. Uh, it, uh, I think you actually have to be on tour to see how much time and effort and sometimes really patient snapping effort is required to, to do all these interviews, all this constant... You have to answer the same questions time and time again. Ben Stokes has been phenomenal at doing that. He's absolutely blown me away. I mean, sometimes, the day before a match, England captain will have to spend three hours doing media, and Joss Butler needs to delegate some of that, I think, because he's become really grumpy uh, in the last uh, year or so. And I think that's why McCullum will be good for him. Because McCullum will give him positive energy. We've seen what Brendan's like. Saying that Brendan's not great at interviews, by the way. For someone who's as outgoing as he is on the way he plays on a cricket field, he's actually not the best in the media. No, Stokes is a different league. No matter what's happening in Stokes' personal life, as a coach, and you put him in anything that happens to him, you put him in front of the media, you put him on a cricket field, and he delivers under pressure, right? Yeah, but I've also seen McCullum say at the end of a day's play when somebody you would think would be put up for the media send a coach out and go no 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 he needs to recover he needs to do his ice baths he needs to get things back on board you can have him tomorrow morning but you're not having him tonight and I think McCollum is very very good and very strong minded when it comes to that and I think he'd be good for Josh I think McCollum would be really good for Josh Butler I really do I think they've got a lot of similarities from a playing point of view the keeper the aggressive batter two, two different characters from off the field but I think that could work. I, I think, I personally believe Josh Butler has earned the right, because of the cricketer he's been for England, to mould a team in his, in his way. This team identifies Josh Butler as a captain. I'm not sure them two World Cup teams identified as Josh Butler's team as a world as but a, as a McCullum captain. will get the credit if, if that happens, I mean, because of the way it's, where it has happened. But they've now gone for McCullum. Uh, after a poor World Cup and if he comes in no matter if it's Josh's team I think McCullum will be the one who actually gets the credit if I was Josh I couldn't care if I've won the World Cup yeah exactly if you're, if you're the World Cup captain but I do agree on the keeping I think you look at the injuries had now it's come back for the third time it's a calf injury it's lower calf as well I've had one of those well I've had everyone but when you get one of them they're very hard and keeping is a hard job captaining keeping the fitness that's required. I mean, he did this running on the beach, didn't he? Did he running on the beach? Yeah. I mean, you know, running on a treadmill, it's a lot easier. He could, <laughs> he could, he could, he could have keep and captain the team that played the players that played in the World Cup because they didn't really need much captaining. This is what I mean about if he carried on as co as captain. This is a young side. They need delegation. They need leadership. And I think that leadership, nothing to do with Joss's wicket keeping prowess or his ability to keep wicket. I just think they need their captain to be closer to each and every one of them. And I think that will do him the better, world of good. It might prolong, I don't think it prolong his career, but it might prolong mentally uh, the freshness that he needs to get around and enjoy the fact that he's playing with some very, very talented young players. And like I said before, I'll keep saying this, by the end of that World Cup, we look at that team and go, that's Joss Butler's team. I identify this team as Josh Butler's team, like I did in 2019 and I identified it as Owen Morgan's team. I'm not sure I did in the last two World Cups.